Hello and welcome Among Us fans. I'm Glenn. In the next three minutes, I'm going to show you how to draw an Among Us character any size, as small as your thumb to as big as a poster. We'll also be drawing the emergency button in 3D using the splat and whoa, there's yellow coming out of the vent. That means he's the imposter, right? My kids have been showing me all about this fabulous game. Let's have some fun. I'm going to show you fast, then we'll go back and I'll show you slowly and you can copy me. It all starts off with two boxes. The little guidelines that I'm putting inside, you should draw really lightly. They're just sketchy guidelines. And then we darken in our shape over the top. Are you ready? The technique that I'll be showing you is based on a square. So for a small character, sketch a small square. If you want it larger, let's draw a bigger square. When you're happy that it looks like a square, let's extend those two lines at the side downwards to draw another square underneath. Use really light guidelines until you're happy that it looks like a square. Hey, in this top square, we're drawing a really light guideline to get the visor level right. Let's draw the visor firstly with a, a little line just outside the square and then come all the way over here and draw a second guideline. A top and bottom, so we're drawing a rectangle. Let's start the visor with a rectangle. The bottom we're going to slope up slightly just to give it a little bit of character. So round um, that edge off and then just round the corners off a little. Then join it up and when you join it your lines can be a little curvy as well. Draw in a highlight in the visor, like a little bean shape. Halfway between the highlight and the bottom, place a little mark. And then that curvy line is what will be the darker section in the visor later on. Slope the very top of the square down just slightly. Good. Now we're going to round off this corner and continue the curve around. But before you get to the visor, bring it downwards to meet. Great. Now, instead of leaving a straight line there, I'll slightly curve that line. And then on the other side, continue that line around and darken it in down the bottom. It can be a, a curvy line as well. Divide the very bottom line roughly into thirds. So place two marks and check one, two, three even thirds. Cool. Now we're going to just round off the feet. And then to make the legs, extend those lines. Now draw a curvy line to finish the legs and notice that it sits a little bit in front of the leg. If a light was shining on our character to be roughly that shape. And that's where that line comes from that we see when we're coloring it in. So just sketch a curvy line that starts from the corner, comes around and then meets up on the other side. Now the top of the backpack starts on that line we did earlier. So come out sketch downwards, a bit of a curve, and then tuck back in right on three minutes. I told you we'd do it. Let's test my system and see if it works. With a bigger square, I'm following the same steps. I'm more of an engineer than uh, an artist, so I like to figure out the rules on how to construct these things. That way I know I can draw them any size and it's going to work out. Not too bad. Now this is a pretty rough and quick one just to test out my idea. I've got the legs there. Going to need a backpack. And I think there's only one line I've forgotten and that is the one inside the visor, but pretty good. Let's make the outlines a little darker. I'm using a texture here. It turns out that it's just about to run out. Not such a good choice. Uh, if you were a primary school student, then I would use a black pencil, um, nice and sharp to give you those outlines. I'm using a texture here. Again, if you're uh, not fully confident yet, then use a light a blue pencil. This is an art marker. And if I go over it fairly quickly and wait for it to dry, I can get a darker shade. So I'm going on doing the red here while I'm waiting for that blue to dry. Go around the outside and then come back and as neatly as you can fill in the inside. Now let's try and get that shade along that line. Remember that line we drew earlier? I'm using that as a guide to get my darker shade of blue under the visor. And now for the red, you can see the guideline also that we drew in earlier. 
If the texture you're using doesn't give you a dark enough shade, then go back using a dark red pencil. The same as the visor. I could use a darker texture, or probably better to use a darker shade of blue with a pencil. Awesome! That's looking really good. Hope you're enjoying this. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And while you're doing that, I'll erase some of these lines that we don't need. You can draw among us, we're going to draw the emergency meeting button. Trace around the ellipse and then divide that space into three equal thirds. One, two, three. On that mark, we're going to slide the ellipse down till it touches and then trace just half an ellipse at the bottom. Join the sides and that is a cylinder. Nice start. Now bring the splat down to where we finished off drawing on that ellipse and mark in a dot on the right blip and the left blip. Those marks are important because that's what we're going to line the corners up to. And we're marking in the control panel. There's the two edges close. Round them off or extend them to meet in a sharp corner if you like and then rotate the splat and continue that line until it disappears behind the button. Next comes the hazard marks. Find a point halfway between there and there. On that dot we're going to draw a line that goes all the way up and almost touches that back line. Same thing on the left. Extend a line but stop just before that line. Now we're going to rotate the splat and bounce those lines behind the button just like we did before. You can join the corners up, those diagonal lines. And now we're going to draw in the actual hazard markings. So lots of parallel lines all the way along there. And down the other side. My lines are pointing slightly up to make it look like a ramp. Um, so the control panel is slightly raised. Draw the button cover in the open position. From that corner, draw from the blip down. The corner is kind of hidden behind the button, I'm going to guess about there, and do the same thing, one whole splat edge. I'm going to join those two lines, um, also happens to be on the splat angle, and have a look at these four corners, including the one that's just hidden. I'm going to draw halfway along the splat edge, we'll call that half a splat length, same, and from that corner, notice how I'm keeping the splat straight up and down while I'm drawing all these. Now I'm going to copy each of these lines. I'm going to draw them further back. So that's the first one I'll copy. Slide it back and draw. So you're drawing a parallel line. Same as that one. Now remember these are all just guidelines. Looks like they don't meet up at the corner very well. So there is nothing wrong with fudging a drawing. Let me erase that and do a better job at trying to line the corners up with a new line. There we go. There's a saying, if it looks right, you've drawn it right. Now I'm using that funny old texture to darken in my drawing. Normally my guidelines would be a lot lighter if I was doing it at home. Here's the quickest way I've found to uh, just to darken in those lines holding the splat like that. You'll find your own methods of doing things. I'm using a much finer line here to draw in the little detail. Drawings look good with some wider and some narrower lines. I'm using an art marker there to just give a really faint uh, plastic or glass cover. And the button of course is red and we're using some orange and black for the emergency hazard signal. To finish up today, we're going to draw the vent. Let's start off with a square hole. We trace two edges of the splat, rotate, and draw in another two edges. Next, we'll draw the hatch open at an angle. Look how I hold my pencil in the blip. Decide on your angle, then draw one edge. Hold the splat at the same angle, and draw another line from that corner. Just uh, join the top there, and that's pretty much how you draw a hatch. And now some detail. On that edge, divide it into half and half again, which is quarters. And on each of those marks, draw a line that's parallel with the hatch. Oh, red's in trouble. Yellow imposter is peeping through the vent hole. Um, we're going to start off by drawing 
the visor because I really wanted to get the eyes in the right position. So we have a rectangle and we're rounding it off like we did before. Draw the reflection and now we'll sketch in the square that sits behind the visor. Uh, we're going to round off that corner and then bring the top around and down. Imposter's visor is looking the opposite way this time because that's where he's going to jump out. I wonder if red's going to hit that button before yellow pops out. Now the hatch is going to be dark, so you'll need to somehow darken that in. And I'm adding some color detail of the hatch. Swoosh under the visor. And some yellow. Um, be careful with the yellow if you've used texture because the yellow smudges um, with the black. Probably best to do yellow before the black, come to think of it. This is my first Among Us drawing ever and it's the first drawing for 2021. Happy New Year everyone! After a few practices, my children took on the 30 second challenge with the extra challenge of drawing one metre high and they're coloured using some pastel. Join us this year for weekly tutorials and design challenges. Be part of our community, hit the like and subscribe. To grab a splat, just check out the links below. Thanks, bye.